Hi there, in this video I'll show you seven unconventional side hustles for software developers. Sure, you'll be able to utilize and leverage your technical skills, but they won't be as essential as in other software specific side hustles. And I do have another video on the channel on five side hustles specifically for software developers that I'll link to the end of this video in case you really want to leverage your programming skills. But in the meantime, let's get onto the list of seven unconventional side hustles. First up, we have got affiliate marketing. And in affiliate marketing, what you're doing is you're promoting other products and services and sending traffic to the offers. So in return, you'll receive a small commission on the purchases made by the traffic that you send to those people's offers. And this is where you can also utilize your software development skills and gain an advantage over non-coders. So imagine if you created a programmatic SEO system that generated landing pages based on highly searched keywords in a certain niche, and you'd be able to quickly generate pages that were of the format of top X products for Y, with X being a product type and Y being a demographic or niche. For example, the top 100 software development books on Amazon or the top 30 lenses for Canon DSLR photographers. By sending traffic through your referral link from your website, blogs and videos, you'll soon build up a steady stream of passive income through this affiliate marketing. Okay, so what are the benefits of affiliate marketing? We have got a red dot on the screen to get rid of that. <laughs> We've got low risk to get started. So you don't have to invest in ads to get started. You can start with organic traffic methods such as SEO. There's low ongoing costs of maintenance, so you don't have to own the product. You don't have to worry about supporting it, adding more value to it and dealing with the support of having that product um, under your own development. Your job is simply to drive the traffic to the offer and that's it, you're done. And then we've got potentially high return on investment. So there's many affiliate marketers out there making a great full-time living online. They spend their time building up these automated referral machines that bring them passive income on tap. And once that machine is set up and taken over nicely, they start work on the next affiliate money-making machine and just keep repeating the process. So it can be pretty lucrative. And then if we look at the drawbacks of affiliate marketing, well, it's quite saturated in that many people run blogs and YouTube channels, and it can be a bit of a somewhat difficult side hustle to break into, especially in competitive niches. So your best bet is to niche right down into a micro niche and drive targeted traffic to a relevant and compelling offer for that niche audience. It's somewhat of an unstable income, so if people don't buy anything, you won't generate a payment, and also you're reliant on the product owner. So imagine if you spent months building up all that traffic, uh, all the assets to drive the traffic, um, for that product to actually vanish, for the company to go bust. If you're gonna do this, I would recommend that you start off uh, in one micro niche, but you're promoting multiple products so you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Okay, secondly, we've got Microsoft apps, which I may have sneaked into this list, but I think it deserves to be on the list anyway. So it does require some programming skills, but with that prevalence of no code and low code platforms, you can pull together Microsoft apps super quick. And a Microsoft app is an app that you would build on the side to generate recurring monthly subscription income from a niche user base. And just like big SaaS, Microsoft founders benefit from the core concepts of build it once and sell it to many and a recurring monthly income. Microsoft apps are completely scalable, meaning you can start it as a side hustle uh, before turning it into a stream of passive income big enough to quit your nine to five which is exactly what I have done. And I'll link to my video on my transition from corporate software developer to Microsoft founder now. Let's take a look at some of the other benefits of Microsoft apps. So number one is disproportionate income. So you are no longer being paid per hour as you do in active income, but rather being paid for the results of the uh, your efforts in building a great product. And as such, it's not uncommon for solo developers to generate disproportionately large monthly incomes, anything from $10,000 all the way up to $100,000 in monthly recurring revenue. And then secondly, we've got compounding results. So instead of starting at zero each month as you do in other side hustles, you build upon both the existing subscriber base and the app's features each and every month. And then finally, we've got minimal startup costs. So you don't need upfront investment for inventory, offices, sales, marketing, teams, etc. Microsoft apps really just in, uh, is a time investment on your behalf and therefore they're really low risk to spin up, especially if you start them in your spare time whilst working on your nine to five. All right, so let's now have a look at the drawbacks of Microsoft apps. Platform risk number one, if you build your app on a platform, your own success is tied to that platform's ecosystem. 
If the platform declines in popularity, your app will also suffer the consequences. If you're just building your own app rather than a plugin, then I guess you'll be protected from this reliance. Uh, next, we've got copycats. Um, so if people see your app gaining popularity, they may launch a competing product. But again, you can kind of minimize the effects of this by obfuscating your code, offering a great customer experience, and uh, just making it so good that your customers don't want to look elsewhere. And then finally, we've got multitasking mayhem. So you better be good at multitasking as you will need to wear many hats, ranging from a programmer to project manager to marketer, support agent, finance manager, you'll be doing the lot. Um, but that said, having variety in your day um, can really help break up the uh, monotony of just coding all day. And then number three, we have got flipping existing SaaS apps. Now, what I mean by that is the process of creating a positive ROI on an existing app or app framework. So the term flipping is borrowed here from the housing market where you see the potential to add value to a property that makes that property worth more than your total investment in it. Same property market principles can be applied to SaaS apps. So you'll have some old tired apps in need of some refurbishment you might have some apps that you'd be able to buy at sort of a pre-revenue stage, which is similar to buying a property off plan. And it'll be up to you to try and find these opportunities where you can add value to an existing app, either by adding new features to it, uh, revamping the marketing, improving the SEO, or creating a positive ROI from paid ads. And within a fairly short period of time, you could have vastly improved the app's financials. And once you've waited long enough to prove it wasn't just a temporary spike, you can resell the app for a profit. There's many online marketplaces where you can get started, such as Empire Flippers, Micro Acquire, and Flipper. And if you're just getting started with this, I would recommend Empire Flippers, as it's where I sold my SaaS apps, and I can wholeheartedly say the experience was superb. It's much more of a managed service compared to micro acquire and flipper, so you'd be far less likely to be the victim of a, a scam on there. And uh, I'll link to my Empire Flippers playlist now, which includes my review, sales timeline, the buying and selling process, and more. Okay, so now on to the benefits of flipping SaaS apps. Stop reinventing the wheel. Nowadays, you can buy an app or a framework at a fraction of the cost of developing them from scratch yourself. Uh, secondly, you can turn one app into many. So let's say you buy a pre-revenue CRM app that the owners never really got around to launching, you could create a tailored or many tailored versions of that CRM platform for multiple micro niches, see which one performs the best and then double down on that one. And then we've got diversity. So by acquiring multiple apps, you'll be able to work in multiple niches across a variety of technologies. Okay, so on to the drawbacks of flipping SaaS apps. Number one, due diligence. So unfortunately, a lot of businesses sold on these online marketplaces are being sold for a reason which the seller does not want to disclose. And it's your job to dig deep enough into the financials and the business itself to try and discover the genuine reason for the sale. And that in itself can be a time consuming task. Secondly, we have got scams. So inevitably, where there's large sums of money changing hands, there will always be scammers, unfortunately. Definitely need to have your wits about you when you are acquiring an app. As I said earlier, that's why I would recommend going through a managed service such as Empire Flippers until you've been around the block enough times to be wary of what you're looking for. And then finally, we've got opportunity costs. So obviously this side hustle requires some initial financial investment and then investment of your time. And whilst you do get a business in a box, it is possible that your time and money could have given you a better ROI elsewhere. Just before we jump into number four, if you're getting some value from this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like on this video and consider subscribing for future content similar to this. All right, without further ado, let's get on to number four, which is blogging as a side hustle. So software development is a great niche and plenty of software developers out there use their knowledge in the field to write about industry updates or just give walkthroughs and tips about how to become a better coder. And you can monetize your blog to generate passive income whilst you're at work or whilst you're asleep. And you can run ads on the blog. You can negotiate sponsorship deals on there too. Or alternatively, if you host your blog on a platform such as Medium, you can get paid from the partner program, which bases payouts on how many times your articles have been read. So let's have a look now at the benefits of blogging. Well, it is easy to begin. So you can just sign up on a blogging platform like Medium or buy a domain and host your own blog to get started. It's for a very flexible side hustle, so you can choose the hours that you want to work and you can work 
anywhere, as long as you've got the internet with you, and your results compound. So as you publish more articles, your site's domain authority will increase, and with that, your previously written articles should rank higher in Google too. And we'll now have a look at the drawbacks of blogging. So it requires some patience. It can take years to build an audience and actually generate an income from that audience. Also, original ideas are difficult, so some people struggle to generate original ideas for content for their blog. And finally, we have got copycats. So given the nature of the written word, it's uh, very easy for people to plagiarize your content and claim it as their own. Right, so the next side hustle we're going to talk about will be online courses and ebooks. So if you've got a particularly specialized skill set, then why not try your hand at creating that online course or an ebook? Platforms like Skillshare and Udemy, which allow you to sign up for a free account and publish your course for free. And as people watch your course, you'll generate a passive income. And that works well in a similar way for ebooks uh, and even physical books as well. So you can leverage platforms such as Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing, which allows indie authors to publish their own print-on-demand physical books. And as people buy your ebook or physical book, you'll receive passive income from the royalties each month. So let's have a look now at the benefits of online courses and ebooks. So it's your real knowledge and you just need to talk or write about what you know. It's as simple as that, making it a, an easy side hustle to get started with. After all, the vast majority of your writing will come naturally from your experience in a particular area of software development. It's a passive income stream. So once a product is created, you'll be able to generate passive income in the future from its build it once, sell it to many model. And then finally, you're helping others. So by sharing your knowledge with, with other programmers, you're helping them to achieve their goals, which in turn will boost your own self-esteem, make you feel good. All right, so next we have got the drawbacks of online courses and eBooks as a side hustle. First one is audience required. So it's much easier if you already have an audience that is likely to buy your product. Otherwise, you'll be paying a hefty percentage of your royalties to platforms like Udemy and Skillshare to tap into the existing audiences. There's no guarantees. So even though you might spend several weeks or months or even years creating a course or a book, it doesn't mean that anyone will buy it. If you're not solving a problem for your audience and helping them achieve their desired transformation from A to B, it's likely that your efforts could all have been a waste of time. And finally, we've got teaching skills are somewhat required. So if you're not great at explaining concepts uh, or writing, then the creation of a course or book product could be a difficult and time consuming task. We shall have a look at the next one now, which is number six, and that is YouTube, which is this obviously. So <laughs> there's over 30,000 hours of new content uploaded to YouTube every single hour. So what's stopping you from throwing your hat in the ring? After all, if I can do it, so can you. Um, by creating YouTube videos, you'll be breaking down complex software topics you've learned and you'll soon build up an audience of subscribers. And over time, the more views that your videos receive, the more passive income you'll receive from YouTube's creator program. Additionally, you can also do sponsored videos or promote your own products through your YouTube channel. But that's not all. Let's have a look at the other benefits of YouTube. Right, so the first one is the low barriers to entry. So uploading and watching videos on YouTube is completely free. So this gives you the opportunity to experiment and find out whether it works for you or not without worrying about any costs. You can just record your videos, upload them and see how you get on. So secondly, we've got this great SEO benefit. So as Google owns YouTube, if you link to your website and blog articles from your YouTube videos, Google will see that you're driving traffic to your site from YouTube and hopefully boost your site in the organic rankings. And finally, we've got the passive income element of YouTube. So after you've recorded and uploaded a video, it will continue to gain viewers over time and bring in that recurring income for as long as YouTube's around or as long as the video's online at least. Okay, now onto the drawbacks of YouTube. So hard to stand out at uh, YouTube. You could say it's saturated, but actually there's so much content being uploaded. You just need to find a particular micro niche where you can resonate with a particular audience and you need to make compelling content that will appeal to that niche audience. That said, there's no guarantees of an audience just because you think I'm going to make some videos on a particular topic. There's no guarantee that the, that's going to actually attract an audience. You're, you're going to get the views you think that your channel deserves. Um, 
and it's a bit of a slow grind as well. So it's not a, uh, you're not going to go viral in your first few videos. Uh, it's something that you have to work out slowly and consistently and put in the effort. But as long as you're improving, even if you just improve one thing in your videos each time, YouTube will see that the viewer retention will be higher and overall your uh, efforts will compound and you will get a more popular YouTube channel. Okay, so finally, number seven, we have got investing. One of the most effective ways of creating a side hustle as a software developer is simply investing the money that you're paid from your nine to five. It sounds dull, sounds boring, but it makes your money work for you and it allows you to generate returns, whether it's through rising stock prices or through dividends. If you're new to investing, then I suggest you look at something like index fund investing, which will be a more straightforward path than putting all your money into one company. Not that I can talk after I sold and exited from my SaaS apps. I put a good chunk of my money into Tesla shares. Um, so I actually own a Tesla. Well, I decided to lease my Tesla for three years and invest the money that I would have spent on the car into Tesla shares instead, as I believed it would grow significantly over that three year period. It's going pretty well so far for me and I upload quarterly updates on my second channel, Rick on Tesla, uh, in case you're interested in following my journey on, over there. Anyway, back to investing and these side hustles. So let's take a look now at the benefits of investing. Well, first up, we have high return. So compared to leaving your money in a savings account, you can expect to see much higher rates of return on your money. After all, you definitely need to outperform inflation just to tread water, just to stay even. It's easy to get started nowadays. There's as many investing apps available. And if you're a small business owner like myself, you may even be able to invest in stocks through your business as I have done personally. Finally, it's with fractional shares, it's easy to buy because you can invest in fractional shares so you can become familiar with investing in small investments rather than having to buy an entire share's worth of a company's stock. Okay, and now we'll have a look at the drawbacks of investing. Number one is the obvious one, the, the risk. So you could lose a significant portion of your invested capital. If a company performs poorly, investors are going to sell and send the stock price plummeting. Um, and tied in with that is the market crashes. So this is a, unfortunately a recurring event within history, but you can quickly lose a massive portion of your investment on a market crash. Finally, we have time. So if you're buying stocks on your own, you must research each company to determine how profitable you think it will be before you buy its stock. You must learn how to follow that company's developments in the news in case you need to take swift action with your investment. And of course, all this takes up time uh, as well as your money and there's an opportunity cost associated with that. Okay, so now you've heard about all seven unconventional software side hustles and I've got a question for you. Which of these side hustles do you think is best? Are you gonna start one soon? Do let me know down below in the comments. If you're looking to earn an additional income as a software developer, then it's worth pursuing any of these unconventional side hustles. And out of the side hustles I've listed, I'd highly recommend you look into creating micro SaaS apps. It's what this channel is about and it's by far the most rewarding side hustle is it utilizes the coding skills you've already got and offers many benefits. And if you're interested in learning more about Microsoft, then I have a free handbook, a Microsoft handbook that you can download uh, on my website. I've got a link in the description below and it's 100 pages long. It's completely free and it covers everything you need to know from idea to exit. Okay, if none of these side hustles are one for you, then I suggest you watch my other video, which is on five side hustles that are specific for software developers. And you can uh, take a look at that, see if any of those appeal to you. And last of all, if you are interested in Microsoft's passive income, quit the day job or Chrome extensions, that's the content that I cover on this channel. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more on that. And we also have this Facebook group, the Microsoft Mastermind, which is a small but growing group of Microsoft founders uh, that are trying to help each other out along that journey. I'm always in that group, so you can tag me with any questions that you've got and uh, I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. And other than that, I will see you soon. All right, cheers for now.